It is a Sunday. We've got some uh, interesting weather to talk about. A little bit of everything going on. We've got the holiday week coming up. We've got giant surf along the coast. Like big, big, big. Mavericks is breaking the day. It's going to break for the next week and a half probably with swells continuing to come in. Uh, we've got these AR potential storms that are kind of floating around the Pacific. And you'll see what I mean. Like the, these new model runs are really interesting. And like I said, I think this bear, uh, bears out what I said yesterday or the day before yesterday. Hey, listen, don't, you can't really bite on amount of rain or timing of rain outside of 24 hours with an atmospheric river. You can kind of try to bank on it, but you're going to get probably burned. And that's this because these atmospheric rivers are narrow. They move around up and down the coast. And you'll see in this, this uh, next output of the um, precipitable water, I think it's, a, it's the GFS, You'll see what I'm talking about. So here's uh, Mount Shasta. We talked about it yesterday. I love this shot. I love this mountain. Um, first thing you want to pick out on it is you can see you've got some cap clouds, right? So lenticular clouds. This is this morning from Hammond Ranch, which is a, a development just out on the northeast side of Shasta. And you can just see the clouds coming in. I mean, this is it. This is the atmospheric river moistening up. You also see some stability. When you see that fog laying down in here, this guy, that fog, that's kind of low stratus or fog. That's probably valley fog. It's lifted out. But as eventually, it's as we go and get closer to this low pressure center on Tuesday, which is the kind of the main event right now, Tuesday, um, you're going to see the, the inversion go away. In the Central Valley, generally, it has gone away. There is fog, but it's not that really pea soup, dense fog, dense fog advisory. Well, I wanted to pick, let's see if I can do this. I think I can do this. I want to go through this camera. We'll move so we can kind of see development over the last couple minutes or so. And you see the fog kind of cooking in there. See the high clouds, a little lenticular. See how it just cap, like a little cap cloud. They call it a cap cloud because it sits on top of the mountain. And then it fog fills in. This is in the last hour. Let's see, I love doing this. Like I said the other day, you know what? If I, and we'll get, we're gonna get to the Mavericks stuff because Mavericks is actually breaking right now, but I just, I love, you can kind of see some lenticulars trying to form, see those. So if you can picture the air coming in off the ocean, gets pushed up over the top of Shasta, and then it refracts and comes down and sinks into a higher pressure zone. And it, it, the water vapor dries out because you warm and dry as you go down, as you, lose, as you get higher pressure. And it's left with these cap clouds. So yeah, it's awesome, awesome. We can also look at the satellite image. Let's see if we can see, yeah, here we go. Here's us, I'll put a loop around it too. Uh, there we are. You see some fog. See the stuff in the valley that's not moving, the stationary? That's, that's valley fog. You can see some in Sacramento. So there's a low pressure out here, um, and you can see it. And one of the things, this is like a little nugget tip for you. When you look at satellite imagery, um, clearly you're going, okay, that's something. Um, that's a front. You know where fronts came from, the, the, when, why they call them cold fronts and warm fronts? It's fascinating. World War II. Or World War I. It was one of the wars. I think it was, maybe it was World War I. Or it was World War One or World War Two, but they used to, the fronts, right? They used there's cold front. That's where that terminology came from, uh, you know, the the battle front. So they started naming these things fronts, like in, in the war zone. And so this is, in, I think it was World War Two, and so I'll get corrected on that. But anyway, as you look at this development, look at that. So that you know something's going on, even if the radar is not showing anything, which it is showing stuff. But you see that vertical development. You see it bubbling, like especially this guy right here. I think you can see that. See it bubbling up and, and, and getting bigger. That's up around Cape Mendocino, but that's dynamic. Now, when you get down here, do you see much of that? No, you don't. And that's at our latitude. So that's why, that's why first thing you go, even without any forecast models or anything, you look at the satellite and you go, where's, where's the dynamics? Well, dry in here, a lot of high clouds here, this textured stuff, that's the dynamics, okay? And this is textured down here but it's not textured in a vertical development way. It's more, those are like more like roll clouds, um, which is a whole other thing we can get into. But just those are, those are those big right here. See those? Boom, 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 boom. Possible thunderstorms in some of there, I would guess, and all as the day goes on. But also, you know when those days you drive through the valley and you're looking at um, those big vertical cumulus clouds? That's what those are. And they're forming out over the ocean, which is an indication that that's really unstable air because the ocean is not very warm. Usually those form convective, big convective 
cumulus clouds form over the land where the heat is rising and from the day, right? So this afternoon, as that goes over land, I wouldn't be surprised to see a few thunderstorms up in Northern California. I don't know if that's even in the forecast, but it looks, when I look at that, without looking at any models, without looking at any radar, you just go, oh yeah, some stuff going on there because there's vertical development. So that's your first thing. That's, you don't, you, and, and this is the model we're gonna look at. This is precipitable water. But one of the other things I would say to you is one of the most important things you can ever do, because I know you guys are into this or you wouldn't be sitting here right now with me, but the most important thing you can do is look at real time conditions. You probably notice I do a lot of cameras. I do a lot of uh, live, live cameras. I do a lot of satellite I, because that's what's really happening. Models, okay, here we go. Models, you know, you have, the, the things are changing. There's some satellite derived c uh, components to models now, which is awesome because now you have more data points, but we still send up weather balloons twice a day at Oakland and SFO in San Jose. I think San Jose, yeah. All the big airports are required to send up a weather balloon once in the morning, once in the evening, in the afternoon. Big weather balloons. They still go up. Um, and I actually, my dad actually found one once because they used to, I think they still do. If you find the radio sound that it's, the balloon's taking up, the radio sound is taking measurements through the layers of the atmosphere, right? So it's this cold, this warm, this wet, this windy. And it goes through all the layers. So you're going through a vertical layer of the atmosphere, pretty darn high. That, it, we did that this morning at like 5 a.m. Uh, at Oakland, let's say. All those data points go into a model. That model takes hours to update. So by the time that model has updated, the one we're looking at, the atmosphere has shifted three or four hours, maybe more. Depends which model you're looking at. There's some rapid update models. But, but the point is, that's very few data points. So when you can look at real-time data, you are always way better off. And you can, dude, I, there's, I can't tell you how many times I've used real-time data, in the, certainly when there's a storm going on, are you kidding? Models, when you're in the middle of a, of a frontal system with 80 mile an hour, just go right to the wind observations, go right to the radar, go right to the satellite, and then go right to storm, storm, um, storm watches, people who are on the ground, boots on the ground. Okay, loop around Bay Area. Here we are Sunday morning. You see us. You see the atmospheric river in blue, okay? That's a slice of the atmosphere vertically that is super wet from the ground all the way up to about 10,000 feet. Everything around it is relatively dry. You see how wet, see how moist it is down here in the tropics? That's because there's a lot of water vapor in the air. Um, when water vapor gets this far north this time of year, that's when you get rain. So here's this uh, water vapor. This is this afternoon. And this is Monday afternoon, evening. So kind of a little something, but not much, right? Kind of stays offshore, more in Northern California. And then this is still an AR, but see how narrow it is here? So these ARs right now, it doesn't mean they're gonna stay this way, but right now the models are saying, hey, these aren't much of anything. They're there, they're existent. They're available to be tapped, but they're not real. Like, see, that one just fell apart. So that's Tuesday. Tuesday morning. So Tuesday is our best chance right now for that looks like pretty good rain. See, it translates through, but then it breaks off. So it's not really a, a fire hose. It continues. Then you can move on for some time. Now you're into Wednesday. looks cloudy, foggy, but then you get into Thursday morning. And then this AR impacts Northern California late Wednesday night, Thursday morning. And then you see this AR kind of just sweep by the state. So now, right, right, right there you go, okay, well that's cool, it's not gonna be a big storm, it's Tuesday morning, mid-morning. But if that timing changes a little bit and that thing stalls a little bit, it's wet as hell. So right now, everything looks pretty mellow and you'll see what I mean by, by that, but it can all change. So here's another atmospheric river, see drive-by thing, just drive-by, that's on Friday morning. And then here's an AR, shoots to the north, See, they're all disjointed. They're not like the last ones we've seen. And then there's a little moisture plume goes through on Monday. And then, so you see, right? So that's interesting. That's a big difference from what we were looking at. <clears throat> um, big difference from what we were looking at a couple days ago. Okay, so this is surf sea level winds. Lines, see how close together these lines are? That's breezy. Uh, don't worry about which direction they're going in, but just know that that's wind right there. It's a topographic map. This is not a lot of wind because the isobars are far apart. 
not a lot of wind, not a lot, a lot of wind there or some wind there, um, just so you get the idea. And then that shows you the front, right? Where the, where the isobars are is the pressure change, which is between the high and the low, and you get it close together and you get a front. Here comes Monday afternoon, or Monday morning, pardon me. So Monday, that's Monday. Monday after, that's um, Sunday, what was second? Yeah, that's Sunday afternoon today. And then here's Monday morning, nothing. Here's the Tuesday thing. That's right now Tuesday, that's kind of the deal. So Tuesday morning, wet, Tuesday looks wet, that's the 24th, right? And then that goes through. And now you see these disjointed ARs. There's one to the north, that's on Thursday, it looks pretty dry. There's a little bit of rain. Now it looks like a brighter shot at rain Thursday night into Friday morning. And then you see, so here's what I'm doing with these models right now. I'm gonna go, okay, in my mind, looks like Tuesday is gonna be something. So that's what I'm banking on. There'll be some sprinkles and showers on these other days that, that it shows. But Tuesday is gonna be something. Now the severity of it, you could vary greatly at this point and we'll wait till tomorrow afternoon to see what that model does with that fire hose. Sorry to go on and on, but I just want you to know when you hear people say they know what's gonna happen with these, a lot of these extra tropical storms, but any Pacific storm, sorry about that, any Pacific storm, you're kind of, I mean, you know, kind of like an evangelist, just kind of, you know, they're, 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 they're preaching to you hard um, and you want to believe, but it's, it, it, no one really knows. And this next couple of days is going to be a very interesting forecast. Could be kind of wet, could be really wet, or could be kind of dry. Okay, so here is the model. This is the National Weather Service model showing QPF. This is rainfall potential over the next seven days. And you see where it is, right? So here's the Bay Area. Coastal hills look like they could get, mm, what's that purple? Inch and a half, two inches maybe. Marin County could get three or four inches over a number of days, over a week. And then you see as you go into this northern watershed, you got the potential to get seven to 10 inches of rain. And then up around Seattle, where the bulk of this thing hits, they're looking at 15 inches of rain. Okay, this translates to high elevation snow, good snow for us, good water for the reservoirs. Okay, now some dynamic stuff. Sorry, I hope I didn't go on too long about that, but I just, the AR stuff, it's not new. It's some tropical connections, Pineapple Express, it's blah, whatever we used to call it. But it just, it's just a buzzword, it's like bomb cyclone. Just, just move it on and just go, it's winter, it's California. And I just wanted you to understand how that, how the models work with the weather balloons, right? Twice a day, three data points for the whole Bay Area for, I mean, that's not very many. I mean, and for the whole United States, there's not that many data points. And by the time they get into the model, they're dated. Okay, and I'm not an expert on the models. I know just enough to be dangerous. I know a lot of you guys, a lot of you guys are physicists and chemists and mathematicians that know way more than I know, but I just know the basics about it. So here's Ocean Beach, it's big, it's 15 to 20 foot today, squirrely out there for sure. You see the winds are kind of blowing a little bit offshore. Um, just big tide, big gnarly, stay clear. Mavericks, this is right now, I believe, or now this is, yeah, that's right now. So these are jet skis. I believe on a day like today, they're towing in. It looks really mellow. The tide's a little beefy high. See how the white water's here? That shows you where the reef is. Mavericks, when it's really normally breaking, it's breaking further out here, further offshore into a deeper reef, which is much more surfable. So that waves, that's a good 10 foot face if it breaks. And you can see some of the waves won't even, don't even want to break. So Mavericks, high surf advisory, a high surf warning along the coast, uh, today and for the next few days. And why? Check this out. Oh my God, right? Now I'm, I, I remember when the last time we, it's been years since I've seen this many days of big surf. It goes back up to 20 to 25, we, almost a week from now. A week from now, it's 10 to 15, here, here, here. And that's a, that's a run of seven, eight days. And quite frankly, if you add them all in, that's a run. It could be even longer because it could go another week. So this really, really big surf. This is the Surfline report. And I just want you to see it because if, if there's one thing you want to invest in, if you're going to buy weather content online, and I talked about analysis and visuals, and you're an ocean guy, and you got a boat, and you like to go crab fishing, and you like to go fishing, get on. I would get on Surfline. I'm sure Windy is a good site too, but Surfline 
they really, they go the extra mile. So this is swell right here. This is through, um, this is now, this is, where is this? This is, I got, oh, there it is. That is, I can't find the date on that, I'm missing it. That's on Thursday. But anyway, you just see the, right? You see the wind direction below and you see the swell. And the swell just keeps on giving. And that's why there's a high surf warning, not a high surf advisory. And that, it, it absolutely makes sense. And then you got a, a gale warning um, and a high wind warning, a, a small craft advisory offshore and a gale warning up here. So it's busy. It's a busy time in the ocean. Um, so be careful, please, please, please. And again, is this unusual? Mm, kind of, not really. It's, 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 it's Northern California. It's winter. And it is winter now, so it's on. This is uh, westbound I-80 at Soda Springs. Kind of wet on the roads, isn't it? Because these atmospheric rivers are gonna—they're gonna throw up a warmer air mass. So you're gonna see higher snow levels. There'll be snow for sure. There'll be a lot of awesome snow, but it's gonna be at a higher elevation. Uh, Tuesday system right now looks to be the main event. Um, thanks for hanging in. Little, little, little inside baseball there, um, but I, I do appreciate you guys and. Uh, Happy, well, tomorrow, I'm actually going to surf tomorrow probably, but um, if I don't, I'll get up early and knock one out because I think it's appropriate just because of the holidays. And if you're traveling around the holidays, I'm sorry for you. Actually, no, I'm not because it's, I just hate going to airports during the holidays, but uh, the holiday travel doesn't look bad. Pacific Northwest, West Coast is the only, you know, north of San Jose looks wet and squirrely. But when you get out in the nation's midsection and the east, there's nothing really grinding that's going to be huge. Like, I don't see anything in, in Denver or Dallas. That's the, or Chicago. Chicago will be cold and, and snowy, but in terms of big hub disruption. So that's how it looks right now. Maybe we'll look at, do a deep dive tomorrow into the national. Okay, see you back here.